This is the most important package of the series. Now, is it the thing that completes the car? No, but it is the most vital part to the car to get the most personality out of it? Absolutely. It's something I look forward to every single time. But this paired with an intake we have on the way is really exciting. This is just the first half. Let's pay our dues. Let's get more fun out of this car. But let me tell you, it's going to just completely take it to the next level when we get an intake also. I did not realize until after further research, after owning this car, how crazy the intakes actually sound on a stock turbo and everything with just a regular bolt-on intake. The one I have on the way, I'm really excited about. And we might have a second one on the way to test how it sounds too, because it's a little harder to get a hold of. It looks kind of crazy. We'll get there. But let's open this box. VR Speed Factor. I have a link in the description. It's an affiliate link if you like the video is the best way to support. The why did I buy this one? Because you get it fast. They have them ready to go. There's downpipes everywhere for sale, but they just come quick. It's easy. They focus on downpipes. That's why I went this direction. And honestly, just save yourself the time. Just order it, be done with it, get it in a couple days, throw it in, and now you can get your personality out of your car. For the fun part. Oh, this packaging is solid too. It's like form fit. Ooh the metal pipe. I'm saving that box to put the stock down pipe in. This is cool. I've never seen one of these down pipes from them in person. The logo right there on the side. Pretty cool. Blah, blah, blah. Flex joint here. Just taking a look at all the welds. Everything just looks super consistent, simple. Got these bungs. I always save these and put them in a pile in case you need them for various race car applications in the future. Just a simple downpipe. are kind of cringy with this setup, so let's fix that. Burble adjustment, the sliders all the way down on all of them. Now we'll have none of that. I'm gonna make such light work of this install with nothing but gloves, flip flops, and then if we run into problems, this freeze off pendant chain that I'm gonna leave in the description. If you don't have that to get V bands off, this is goaded. Accidentally found out on the 340i downpipe install. If you don't have these gloves, you should. Link to the description as well. Let me pull the Supra in here and we'll get to work and then editor Justin's gonna pull up in a bit and enjoy this with me. Before I start, in my oxygen sensor socket kit, you're gonna need this one. Link in the description as well. Put that right on my toolbox here. Definitely trickiest car to jack up I've ever had, so I got some blocks under there. You have the jack points right here, but when you're like me and not prepared, you don't have the exact connections for that, so I put the jack here, jacked it up, put my blocks here. And there's a jack point in the center underneath on like the belly pan, which blows my mind. And it's hard to get my jack with the way my garage is set up under here at the right spot. It's deep in there. There's a jack point on the bolt in the center. And that will lift the whole car up. Blocks behind there. I think this will be enough room, just enough, but we will need more, you'll find out. Now for the wrenching part, O-ring seal tool. These things are amazing. This gray clip right here, we're gonna pry it up. Then we can get our mass airflow sensor part. Looks like we have a seven mil. I'll just use a flathead to get the intake out. Loosen this clamp. Separate this elbow from the intake filter. 
Let's go ahead and pull off our engine cover while we're at it. Now this should just pull out. Oh, that's so easy, oh my gosh. If you're wondering where the turbo's at on your B58, it's right here. And then the downpipe's right behind it. We'll get some more light in here in a second, but turbocharger in turbo inlet, part of the intake. Now we just need to disconnect our O2 sensors and the wires right here. These two clips up here, the gray part, you just push them out like a little button. There's two spots where the, there's a cable support. Disconnect those. So you take the gray deals and press down on them and that will release it. They seem a little more flexible than what you would expect, but they come off. Now we need to get them off these little plastic hangers. You just push them forward. If you look at the back side of these, there's that little tab. Editor Justin made it. Howdy. While it was on the mount, I stuck this tool behind and pushed the center tab over and then it just slides off the mount. So now both of these are free, which is ideal. PB blaster for good measure. It's a new car, but I'm just gonna spray it on the threads. We're on the iPhone because it's so much easier to film in these tight spaces. Then I got my O2 socket. I'm gonna find my way in here with the first one. Stick the wire through the center of it and then slide down. We gotta figure out the best positioning here for my ratchet. I should have done all this and then jacked it up. I wish I would have done that. Oh, that was way easier than I thought. Heck yeah. Probably the PV blaster and the car is actually mild hot, so that helps too. And then I'm gonna hold the wire up while I twist this out. Just makes it so much easier because the wire is kind of fighting you. Here's our O2 sensor. Make sure your air to fuel ratio is good right out of the exhaust. And then we're gonna go even deeper to the secondary O2 sensor. You can see how it's set up in there. One little crack loose. Perfect, this one's coming out too easily. Let's go. Wire out. If you're a little bit concerned about doing this install, this is top two easiest downpipes that I've ever done. So if that tells you anything, like you should not be scared and I'm doing it in my garage, not on my lift to help you build your confidence in a garage because that's what we're all about here. And it's hot here in Arizona right now. And so the garage has AC and it's way nicer in here. Cool, both of those are out. Now, editor Justin's gonna show you deep in there. There's two nuts. I think those are like 13s or something or 15. I'm gonna break it loose with my regular ratchet first. One down. Got both of them out. Now, all I gotta do is get the V-band clamp off. It's on the bottom underneath. Yes, it is a 13 also. So to show you where that V-band clamp is, this is the bolt, the 13 mil. I'm gonna get the whole clamp loose. It's impossible to really video in there, but it's really easy to get to. So as you're loosening this, you wanna pull the head of the bolt towards you because you'll see on the backside when we get it off. That way it keeps unthreading it. And so now the V-band clamp is gonna be kinda stuck shut because that's the way it lives. So that's when we're gonna use this freeze off and it should go chink. This worked on Chris's car, so let's see if it works on the Super that has way less miles. Oh, did you hear that? Didn't get as lucky. I'm just gonna try and tap on it in a couple different places. Oh, there it goes. I just needed to put a little pressure on the bottom. That's better. I think I need to loosen it more. Yep, there we go. Then I just pulled on it with my hand. Now it's loose in there. Now I need to do some work on the bottom. Going in from the bottom, I need to take off that bolt and that bolt. 13 mil. Persuasion. I've never seen this. This is what was holding me up. There's a tab right here. I had to push back. So now I can take the down pipe, slide it off. Should come out now. Ta-da! Let's take these out. I need one of these tools right here, a little pick. We're gonna gently work the seal out of here. Take it straight over. Beautiful. 
Dude, you have no idea how loud this is about to be. <laughs> you are not ready. If you're wondering how good this thing fits, I like thought I had it close and it was like all the way made it up against the turbo, like blind. It just fit right up to it so easily. I feel like it made the most sense to me to do the two nuts that mount the downpipe in its location. Get that snug first. Now I'm gonna tighten the V-band clamp, put the O2 sensors in, and then tighten up the bottom. I've got the furthest one down. Get a little bit of this anti-seize on the threads. Doesn't need a lot. Go in here, thread it in by hand. Doing as much as I can by hand with the specialty socket. Okay, that's snug. Round two, the upper one. If you're curious how excited I am to do this, I'm working with an exhaust company that asked me to specifically show it with an OEM downpipe on, and I don't want to wait a week and a half, two weeks. I'd rather drive it around for the next couple weeks with this downpipe on it. So I'm gonna have to do this all over again off camera just for you to hear the audio clips, but when I throw it on the lift, it'll be easy. I didn't even want to wait a couple weeks. It ain't worth it. I'd rather just have so much more fun driving it because this just opens the car up so crazy. There's oddly shaped tools and they're the same color as the engine bay. So I could like set it right here right now, but there's such a high chance of me leaving it here and closing the hood and denning the hood from the inside out or something, or leaving it here and running and it rubs through. When I have weird tools like this around engine bays, I get spooked out. I'm like always like setting it over here when I know I'm done with it. That actually worked. Tightening up the V-band. Making sure it's seated where it wants to be. I already checked that. Solid. Don't need a whale on it too much. V-bands are the most delicate, robust thing ever because they go through so many heat cycles. Anything that's that thin, that goes through that many heat cycles, you're just kind of always asking for it. So it's like, as much as they're robust and you bang them around, I'm also like trying to be careful. I'm putting the wires back where they go for the O2. Slide it from the front back, then you plug it in. Then you press the gray. Take this wire that also gets pressed into this little tab. Slide it on from the back. Take the connector, plug it in, press it on. Safety clip check. Let's do one little last walk through before we put the intake back. We've got the lower two nuts, check. Lower O2, check. Make sure it's the right O2, check. The blue is on the left with the matching clip that's light gray, check. Wires are tucked up where they should be check i didn't do the tab on the lower one because i don't i'm going to take it off again soon the lower section to connect it to the cat back that's tight there's another bolt down there i know for sure that's tight so those are all tight justin gets to witness how insanely difficult it is to install this intake all right you ready for this yes sir so that goes there. damn this might be more difficult than i thought to put back <laughs> I just tried to put this intake back and I realized that these rubber grommets came off with the intake right here, these things. So I put all three back. Dude, I jinxed myself. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, it's important to make sure you get this one up here firm and it kind of like sets it in place. So that's good to go. Then I'm gonna take my mass airflow sensor, slide it back in, clip, and then push the white clear part in and it's locked now all we got to do is tighten this with our flathead cool intakes in this is tight rubber grommets are in o2 sensors on engine cover everyone's so fast to swap these things out when i don't even think the stock one's that ugly i guess you run out of things to buy and then it's just like well let's just do it i don't know justin are you ready for this it's gonna be so know. loud <laughs> uh, sorry neighbors To follow up with an even better method, now I can just pull in my wood blocks and I know my low profile jack, which is one, and I can drive it off of here. So I don't have to like monkey around with doing one jack stand and then the other. It's that time. It's time, dog. All right, that's quiet. All right, let's see, I got 
that sport mode on. <laughs> Alright, that's it for the house. It's late. Oh yeah, she's breathing now. Oh, it that throws you back now. Dude, it's so smooth <laughs> with the throttle. Oh my gosh, it's like so nice now. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the traction off. Oh. <laughs> it just breathes now. Alright, ready? Yes, sir. Holy cow. Just spinning forever. <laughs> so fun. Let's go on the EcuTech app for fun and turn the verbal all the way up. All three sliders. <laughs> Dude, that's so loud. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Alright, let's calm down. That's so stupid. Alright, let's go half. Even then, it's too much. Alright, let's go duration a little shorter. That's a little tasteful. Let's go a little less duration. We got ignition delta and minimum ignition. A little, like, right there. That's tasteful. We can add a little spice in there. Let's go up on these sliders. That's nice. Why do we do this stuff at night so much? It's because it's so hot in AZ, like the night's the only time you can do anything and like not feel guilty to your car. But it sucks for filming, but cars first. All right, editor Justin's turn. Yeah, big seat time. <laughs> yes, sir. Hit me with some like four or five K sauce. <laughs> This engine is so good. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it's just like something about it. this E85 calculator app, so I need to do five gallons of 91. All right, can you back up? This app is sweet. You plug in your tank size, pump gas at ethanol, or the percentage of ethanol at the pump gas, the percent of ethanol at the pump, which this one's usually E85 or higher. Current ethanol makes zero, and then I put the tank at wherever the level's at in the car, and it tells me the values at the bottom. Resulting mix, E50. So this should go to around seven. There's a higher content of E85. It's not exact, but it's usually E90 or above here, so... Or I underestimated how much fuel was in, so I didn't quite get the 7, but the computers are smart enough on here. It's not gonna do any damage, I'm not even worried about it. Moran's told me enough times, don't worry about it, it's way smarter than you think. It almost doesn't feel right, like we should be allowed a car this nice and this, <laughs> and this fast. Too much of a DJ. <laughs> yeah, like we shouldn't be allowed it at this age. <laughs> Now you're in E50 though. That's the quick map switch. Let's see if Justin can feel the difference of the E50. You feel it? Oh yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> She's zooming now. Leave it in third, it freaking goes. All the links and resources are in the description. Thanks for stopping by today. If you're new to the Super Series, make sure you check out this video next so you don't miss out on a single one.